Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum Today. We're glad to be with you running up toward the big 4th of July yes. weekend. Well, it's not really weekend. Weekday no. holiday this mm -hmm. year. Kind of interesting when you have a holiday in the middle of the week because people often expand that holiday to encompass more days if possible. Yeah, right. It's Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thursday this so week. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, wow. <laughs> Get yeah. as much out of it as you possibly That's can. That's right. Well, there are some uh, interesting news stories today. Some of them are crazy. This so let's start yeah. with one of the crazy <clears throat> ones. Okay. A woman in Texas, Wichita Falls, Texas, has now been banned from her local Walmart after eating half of a cake and demanding that she should be able to pay half price. Okay. Police were called, I guess, as she was wandering through the aisles after picking up the cake in the bakery and eating it. Okay, she's she eating it along. as she's walking down the aisles of her Walmart store, right? Yes. Okay. Have you ever been that hungry that you eat? No. You open up whatever you have in your basket and eat that? Have you seen people do that before? I have seen people do that. Have you ever been that hungry? It's kind of just a little weird. <laughs> I've thought about it before. Have you really? I've never done it. Never have I done it. Never but have I ever. About it. But I have, like, wanted to snack and gone to the store and got like chips and munchies in the, in the car on the way oh, home. Oh, well, on the car, that's I'm a different done. deal. But I mean, I can't imagine <laughs> eating. Because, no, here's the thing. The lady gets to the checkout stand and says, I'm not going to pay full price for this. I'm only going to pay half price because there's only half a cake. Wow. Now, she did pay full price when the police actually arrived. Oh, I'm sure she did. <laughs> but she was banned from the store for wow. theft. Oh, oh well. Well, she didn't really well, steal she, it no, she no, paid the she, whole price. she didn't want to, but she eventually did Apparently. pay for the whole thing because, Apparently. goodness, she'd eaten half of it. Apparently her intentions were not good initially as she was only going to eat pay, eat half and pay for the other half. The, a funny part of the story is it says a similar incident took place at another Wichita Falls Walmart earlier this year when a woman was banned after the police say she rode around the parking lot in her electric cart while drinking wine from a Pringles can. <laughs> oh my goodness. From a Pringles can. So uh, I'm assuming that this those, must have been one of those carts. electric carts well, that sure, they have at Walmart. sure, it's an electric cart. Uh -huh. You know, that, that, <laughs> how fast can those things go? Not fast. And uh, why would you ride around? I guess it's because you've been drinking way too much wine from your Pringles can. <laughs> Imagine that. No. Uh, yeah. That's just bizarre. In the, okay. in the parking lot. Okay, here's another just one. having fun. That to me... <laughs> It's pretty, okay, I don't know, probably only Let's in California. See. State of California is now set to become the first state in the United States to, to ban hair discrimination. Ruth, did you know before I did today there was such a thing as hair discrimination? Hair discrimination, that's like, we're getting to the place where it's like controlling, like you, this, is, this is allowable and this is not allowable. Right, I've so, never heard of that. I've had many friends, and in high school, I loved it. I, my friends, I had great friends, and one of them used to have big hair, and I loved his hair. I mean, okay. it's not a problem. Why is it a problem? I, 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 don't, don't, I don't understand that. I guess some businesses and schools demand that there be a certain hair code. And so if you have... Uh, I've never even seen any. I have never even you, uh, seen anything are, ever in the guidelines of a place of employment that would have you. I mean, if you're in a restaurant, people right. are going to have to have you're going well, you to, to have, have your you hair in a net. A net. Now, you're going to have to have it. your hair put up or in a net. But I can't imagine in a professional setting that there would be something in the in the guidelines or I, dis I can't the disclosure One of some of the kind things regarding that your hit hair. Me as I was reading about this, is that they said that this was dealing with rampant. Uh, never heard of it. How is it rampant it. if nobody's even ever heard of hair discrimination? I don't know. That just seems crazy. Okay. Moving on to something that's a little more hard-hitting. Uh, of course, the first Democratic uh, debate bait was just about, what, a week ago, roughly? I think it was a week ago. Okay. All right. Oh, well, yes. now they say the rates has now tightened by the latest poll. Of course, I don't okay. know. We are so far away from anything that matters. But I, I think that... Um Joe Biden is going to be one of the ones that are that's going to go far. Leading. I believe he's going still to go far. But it's he is now. He was up at thirty four percent, if I remember. But now he's down at twenty two percent in this okay. poll, and um, seventeen percent now are backing Kam Kamala Harris. Kamala. Kamala Harris. Harris. Fifteen percent with Bernie. 
No, and supporting Warren, uh, Warren and. Oh, I'm sorry, 15 uh -huh. with Warren and 14% with Bernie, and then nobody else got in that poll got over five. <laughs> so now it looks like a, a four, four, I can't say a four-man race. So when do two we, men, like, women. break it down to those top ones? That's still a ways to go. E. Yeah, it's forever until that. Yeah. I mean, the things that and will change. And then they have to um, submit their fundraising, don't they? Quarterly. Do they, yeah. Quarterly, they have to meet a certain goal. Well, no, you don't have to meet a goal. I thought but they that's did. For, well, that's if you're going to participate in the next debates. I think. Oh, I see. You have to have made a certain giving threshold. Detroit's the next uh, debate point. So, don't know. Interesting stuff. And then going along that same line, mm -hmm. the folks at Facebook have said that they are going to ban going forward uh, ads that tell people not to vote. What, what is that actually <laughs> either? I mean, I, I guess an ad that says, you know, oh, there's no point. Don't even go out. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't get it. I, do do we not have it, enough common sense that we, we all need, you know, we all need Google and Facebook and all these guys to tell us what to do. And, of course, the government to tell us what to do as well but. because I guess in some people's minds we're all so unintelligent we can't figure out haven't you ever seen a but Facebook you know ad and said, good grief, that is so bogus? I mean, I have. And gone somewhere else to check it out to see if it's ridiculous. real. But, you know, a lot of people do get their news. You, you, get, your, you get it on social media. A lot of, a lot of okay, people do that. What? There That's are fine. ads. And but you've got you to be thinking it through. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen stuff on Facebook. I remember back in the election cycles of the past thinking, I don't know if that's true. You and I talked about that. I saw something, and I don't know if that's true. You should really, you should really do some vetting. If you can't yes. find it anywhere but on your Facebook feed, you probably better doubt that yes. it's real, that that is yes. probably made up. Yes. So, or, or not even just Facebook, any other social media feeds. Or if you can only find it on one place and it's some bizarre uh, listing yeah, in the yeah, heading, That's what I do. Know? I try to always go to the link and see where it's coming from. Right. Is this a legitimate... Is this a news service? Right. Or not. Exactly. Of course, some of the stuff on news. some of the news services online, too. You read that stuff and you're like, is that true? That's the whole problem that we have with that dossier, mm. is that the dossier was fed to like one group and then bled out to other groups, yeah. and then they verified it by the other groups yeah. saying, hey, yeah, the, they read it. And, uh, right. You know, come on. Mm -hmm. There's so much crooked stuff anymore. I was talking to somebody at church yeah. on, was it Sunday? No, this maybe it was, it was on Sunday, but it wasn't at church. And they were saying that they were, they were doing some additional, you know, research and listening to things that were dealing with, the his, with historical things. And, and, and so many of the things that are being told us today are just blatant. Lies. What are you, lies. What are you talking about? What do you mean specifically? What are you talking about? Specifically? Mm -hmm. Well, this person was talking to me about how the, a lot of the people, including some of the ones we just talked about that were involved in the debates, will oh. come out with one position, and then they'll say, well, I don't believe that now. And then you'll ha they'll have a video that will show where they said they did believe it, because at and the now time they, they said did. they didn't believe it. And you're yeah. like, you're just a fibaroo because you will not stick to a position. You say whatever is needed at the time to get a vote with the mm -hmm. people you're in front of at the moment. There's no dependability and there's no... Um, well, because people have an agenda that they are trying to, they're trying to push. They're trying to push their agenda. Don't yes. you believe that's true? I absolutely do. And so that. that's what happens. And I think their agenda is whatever is At the pertaining moment. to yeah. the moment. Yeah. So, okay, well, we're coming up on to the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. Tell me your favorite 4th of July memory. Oh, my goodness, I have, I have a lot. I have a ton because we usually go home we usually, well, to, to my hometown. We usually go to Clovis, so we've done that in the past. And because we have a lot of family there. Yes. And um, we just enjoy it. And so I've, I have a lot of memories about going to Clovis with the family. For the 4th of July. For the 4th of July. For the food and for the fireworks. And we made news headlines one year one in year the paper. One year we made the front page of the Clovis paper. We did. And we, we kept did. that paper, I think. Yeah, yeah they, we did keep that paper. Yeah, just I, I felt like uh, what was the little monster on Monsters Inc. <laughs> Mike Wazowski. <laughs> yeah, 
I was like Mike Wazowski in yeah. that because you could see my legs. That's yeah, it. Yeah, because the rest of you was underneath the... The rest of me was under the, the canopy. That, that was, was falling really down because it was raining. It was a rainstorm. Yeah. I was talking about it the rains fun. that had come and hit on the 4th of July. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a good memory. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Hope you have a great 4th of July celebration. We have with us today Christina Daly, who is our guest from Sparrow Dance Productions, and uh, we're glad to have you back. It's been a little while. I you can't were just it. launching this. Yes. And now, how long two has years. it been? It's been just about two years. On June 17th, it'll be two years since our grand opening. Wow. wow. Yes. Well, we have a lot to talk about, so catch us up on what's going on with Sparrow Dance. Well, so much is going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we first opened, I think we registered eight students. And we were a oh, little wow. bit freaked out because we had a $5,000 rent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, two years out, we have 235 or so students. Wow. Wow. And then That's we amazing. have a little bit more than 60 or so dancers that are adaptive dancers, which are the differently abled and foster children. Oh, and those are all food yeah, services. Yeah. So we have quite the little nest at the Sparrow Dance I headquarters. So. Sounds like you do. Now, is, are most of your your activities considered to be like after school activities or weekend? I mean, I would assume that Yes, so I'm a teacher as well. And okay. so during the school year, we follow the pretty much the school right year. Schedule. And then in the summertime is when we offer morning and day programs. Okay. But generally it's uh, evening, afternoon, evening. We're open about 4.15 until nine, Monday through Friday, and then 10 to six on Saturday. And so you teach all oh, day. Wow. Yes. And then you go and, and do uh, teach you dance in the evening. Yes, I teach to nine. a yeah. lot of kids all day dance, uh -huh. like seventh and eighth graders, and then leave work and unlock the studio and more dance. I think that's a wonderful thing. You keep your, your children occupied and they're learning yes. at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome that you do that not only during the day, but in the, you know, in the evening. Yes, it's your it's, life. Uh, it's a good life. Mm -hmm. I don't have any complaints <laughs> except my knees get a little whiny. <laughs> Oh my well, goodness. the sad part is that that's probably just the beginning. <laughs> right. You know, as, oh, no. as we right. get older, I'm that. not sure that it's going to get better. That. But we'll hope for good things. Yeah. Right. Ahead, right. Okay. Well, when you were first here, you spoke about your hopes of growing your identity yes. um, as a conservator conservatory and making your identity known throughout the community. How do you feel that you're doing with that? Well, our mission that? statement is really to target and help heal community trauma through dance and the performing arts. That's great. And I feel, especially with our adaptive dance programs and adaptive acting programs as well, that really speaks to our mission statement directly. And I think that's probably quite tangible for mm -hmm. the community. Uh, in other regards, though, we have a competition team. And I grew up doing ballet and modern mm -hmm. dance. I mm -hmm. never did competition. And when we decided to do competition, it was like, we're going to do this different. And, uh, you know, we pray before we go on stage. Mm -hmm. And if it's in the lobby, we stop in the lobby and we pray. Yeah. And we have it set up for our teenagers to mentor the little ones. And so those things that really speak to our identity mm -hmm. of loving your community, reaching out, healing your community, yeah are seen whether it's in an adaptive dance class or at the Kiva Convention Center mm -hmm. in a competition setting where sometimes yeah. that's qu quite crazy. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so, I believe so. You know, and when the, you know, it, it, it's important when our five-year-olds are having a meltdown for our teenagers to step in and console them. And that's a huge example. Well, who, mm -hmm. can, who consoles the teenagers when they're having that's a meltdown? My <laughs> oh, okay. That's my <laughs> job. That's my job. Oh my mine, and, mine and my husband's jobs because we have several teenage boys too. And so he oh, okay. really kind of takes them under his wing. And, you know, I'm there to hug the girls and he fist pumps the boys. Yeah. And so we have a really sweet culture. Well, you that's mentioned good. your husband being engaged with the, uh, the conservatory. Yes. So 
Uh, how do you have time for family prioritization when you guys are both working and and then you're at school and then you're at the at the dance uh, uh, area f until late in the evening? How do you how do you balance those things? I think the first year we did not do it well at all. My we hair was falling that. out. We were crying. We were eating nachos or pizza at eleven o'clock at night every <laughs> night and. Um, a year, you know, after the first year, I, I had to tell him, you know, I married you, not Sparrow. Mm -hmm. And we spent last summer dating and falling in Aww. love again and going into this school year. It's kind of like, well, if we don't check an email at midnight, it's not going to be earth shattering. Right. So put our phones away. Mm -hmm. And on a Thursday night, we go on a date, even if it's to grill out on our barbecue. Yes. Sure. And uh, so spend I think, some family time. yeah, sure. fam I think, you know, how do you balance it? You determine, mm -hmm. you determine to make your family a priority. You protect yes. a family day. Ours is Sunday. Yes. And um, because that really feeds you for when those right. earth shattering dilemmas do come up right. and then you know that you have someone to hold your hand literally in the wings backstage yes, you know exactly you know and um i it's just he's i we, this wouldn't be here without him yeah god is good so yeah it's so good to bring good you together and do that you know it's, it's kind of like the life of a pastor because i was mm -hmm. thinking about that as you were talking because it's well it's a 24 7 right. it's a lifestyle and you do but you do at the same time have to protect that time and right. if you have allotted yours yours is sunday we have a different day of the week but whatever it is you have to protect that that needs yes. to be the first thing you do because right. that is your that's the core of who you are and if right. that's not taking care of it affects everything else and i really and you know we mentioned identity i think when we really honed in on our identity as a married couple with the lord mm -hmm. that's when things really started blossoming at the studio and we were we were stronger to say, oh, gossip is not allowed here. Mm -hmm. you, you need to leave. This yeah. isn't a good fit. Or you can't sass your teachers. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bye. Like, you know, yeah. or, you know, or, um, you know, you need to, this is where you are six days a week and you need to help us take out the trash. Right. You know, and so we good. became we became more assertive in our business because we grew in our identity as a couple. That's good. That's, good. That's really good. Well, so where, where are you going? You know, you're two years in. A lot of people have like a five-year plan. <laughs> where would you like to see Sparrow Dance uh, Productions go in the next few years? Well, we are still building programs. Um, we, in our name, it's Conservatory of the mm -hmm. Arts, and we focused on the dance for the first couple of years. And then in the last six months, we introduced an acting program. Okay. And in the summer of 2020, we're hoping wow. to bring in the singing and the music component. So really uh, focusing on conserving that one art form, building it, making it work as a machine on the business end, and you know, growing our employees, trusting them, and then yes. building the next one, and then okay. building the next one, instead of doing all of it all at the same time, <laughs> which I have a tendency to do, so I have to chill out. <laughs> Multitask. But right, yeah. so uh, really harnessing the arts for Rio Rancho in the Albuquerque, you know, area, to build that strength mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. each art form. And you have to have a. You spoke of your team. You have to have yes. a, a team that you trust oh my and God. a great yes, team support. Yes, they're wonderful. I have yeah. amazing employees. Very, and they're, we have, we're very communicative and they have learned how to respect us as a married couple. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes we have to call a sub and say, we're not going to go in. We need some mm -hmm. time away. Yeah. And uh, very, very kind. We do not hire dancers that are injured because okay. I don't believe in teachers, injured teachers teaching, like mm -hmm. that you need to be healthy. Mm -hmm. um, so we just went through our whole competition season. Uh, a single ankle was rolled. Everyone wow. was safe. Amazing. And in our little handbook, we teach the kids how to eat well mm -hmm. and what not to eat on the day of a show, you right. know. And <laughs> so, uh, and our faculty, our 13 teachers are 100% behind that. That's, That's great. You know, to have a small business, uh, as you do, and you have 13 employees, whether they're full time or part time, I don't know, right. but just managing that many people. And schedules. It, right. <laughs> right. Is, is effort, isn't it? And that, that requires uh, really making sure again that what you're doing at work is combined to what's happening at home. Now you mentioned the fact that you utilize your older students to mentor your younger ones. How is that working? Is that working well? So before we put the little ones with the big ones, we call them littles and bigs, uh -huh. <laughs> we really spoke to the bigs for months before ever bringing them together about the little ones look up to you and as soon as it's performance season, 
you have to mind your manners, you have to do this, you have to do that, you know. Right. And they're, go they're going to need you, and mm -hmm. they're going to look up to you, and they listen to everything, and they look over your phone, at, over your shoulder at your phone, so you have to be careful on social media, right. I mean, r through and through. And then our first introduction with all of them together, we actually did a hair and makeup tutorial day for performance. Wow. And so we were teaching the parents how to do hair and makeup, and then the teenagers, it was kind of like a little assembly line, the teenagers okay. were doing the hair and makeup on the little ones. And good, so, huh? you it's know, good. we kind of, you know, there's lipstick out to here, but was that the point? No, yeah. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> you know, and uh, so moms were there. One of our students said, I think it's so cool that the moms are here with their daughters learning how oh, to do makeup, great. you know, yeah. and, sure. and then uh, we had a little group of the boys because their makeup is totally different mm -hmm. and you have to talk to them <laughs> so they're not freaked out, you know, and so the teenage boys were helping our one little boy and, oh, it's Aww. cool, The Rock wears makeup on movies, you yeah. know, and you kind of have to convince them. <laughs> yeah. but, that is so okay. by the time we got them together, the culture had been established. That's great. Tell us location, and so we're running out of time. Oh, I can tell you people so, plug in. So we're on the corner of Sunt and 528 in okay. Rio Rancho, just down the street from the Ask Academy and the Boys and Girls Club. And do you have a website? We people do, can... sparrowdancenm.com. Awesome. Well, our guest today, Christina Daly, talking to us about Sparrow Dance Productions, and I hope that you will be able to connect with them. That's something that you and your family would enjoy. Thanks for being with us. Thank today. you so much for Good having to see me. You. Yeah. Good to see you. I want to just thank each and every one of you who are so faithful to support Alpha Omega Broadcasting. As we are moving through summer, now we are going to start talking a little bit about the next thing that we're really working on, which has to do with our uh, expansion of equipment to be able to produce programs in studio in HD. Now, one of the needs that we have is for an HD, a high definition switcher. Right now we have HD cameras, but we don't have an HD switcher, so we can't okay. It, it can't take the material in HD. It, it needs to be, a, it can only take it in SD. So we're going to have to start, right, we need to raise about $5,000 for there that. There are so many different and pieces to that. everything. You, you, you make it to one, but, but because there are all, all these other components, you don't, I didn't think about that, but, but we <laughs> have to have it. But the engineers will think of that and because it's necessary, it's needed. And the difference is amazing in, in the signal. If you have noticed, many of our programmers, are, the new ones that have come on, are in HD, and the picture is just amazing. I don't know if they can give us an idea, a percentage of how much of the content is now in HD. I'm guessing that we're about, they're telling me about 50% now is in HD and 50% oh, okay. cool. is in SD. And I think we'll, we'll rise before the end of the year to 70 or 80% awesome. in HD because a That's lot of the, the, the folks are coming with that material. It's just not quite here. So your support is very helpful and I would encourage you to start helping us as we're giving toward this next area, which mm -hmm. is this HD switcher and some of this production equipment. Sure, visit us online at kazq, kazq32.org. Get safely there. Call into the station, 505-884-8355, extension 101, or simply mail in those donations to 4501 Montgomery Boulevard, Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. We appreciate you, and we pray for you, and we ask that you continue to pray for us. God will get us there, and we'll do it together.
Well, as we were coming up on this segment, we were talking about Psalm 34. Let's read part of that. It's so good. It's going to bless you today. Let's pick up the read at verse number three and go down, maybe down to around verse seven. Okay. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation I prayed, and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. You know, as you read that passage, Amen. you can't help but be encouraged Amen. when you listen to what Good. it says. Let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Have you told anybody today or talked about how, how good, good God, God is? is? One of the things that we do in our staff uh -huh. prayer time is we try to end with praise reports. Mm. You need to not only pray and ask for God's blessings, but you need to remind yourself of how good God has already been in your life. It says in that fourth verse, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. What a deliverance to be free yes. from your fears. Yes, and, and, and to have the peace of God that has been coming to me, that's his gift. His gift to me, one of his gifts to me is the peace Amen. that he gives you. And so, I have been, it has been echoing in my spirit. Don't, it's like a gift. God gives me a gift of peace. Why would I give it back? Why would I return? Why would I continually give that gift back to him? Hold on to the gift of peace That's that God has word. given you, regardless of what's going on around you. It is, it's amazing how God does that. I, I don't even have words to explain. The peace that God gives you that you don't understand is a gift. Amen. Next verse says, those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. I love that scripture. Amen. And no shadow of shame will darken their faces. No shadow of shame. Who gives you? Why do we have shame? The enemy causes us to it have shame. Of your past. It's just like Adam and Eve when they were in the garden. They were naked. They had. They were. They were naked, and their eyes were opened when they sinned. Right. Yes. So when God came to have fellowship with them in the evening, He couldn't find them. They're like, "Where are you?" And they're like, "We knew, we knew you were naked. Who told you you were naked? That's that's a work of the enemy to fill you with shame. God doesn't bring shame on you. He brings freedom and deliverance to you. That's what. He, that's what His gift to us is, is freedom and deliverance. It is not shame. The ending verse that we read says, for the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. You know, I, I think that we should never forget. We, you and I talk often about how often angels are referenced in the word of mm -hmm. God. Scripture says that angels are sent as ministering spirits yes. to those who are believers. Mm -hmm. and God has them on dispatch to, to work on behalf of those who follow him. And you know, I hear people sometimes say, oh, you know, I know such and such is my angel in heaven mm -hmm. looking down and protecting me. Well, I think you have a tough time finding that. Scripture right. describes who the angels really are. Yes. And they, they work to minister and to bless people as God dispatches them. You have a blessed day in the Lord. Have a happy 4th of July.